Eric Lohman, PJ General Manager. Today we're going to talk with Matt Sanders, our course superintendent, about some of our pending projects, make that golf course better to play, and we're going to uh, cap it with a little bit about pace of play and some of the things that we're going to focus on. I'm joined today with uh, Matt Sanders, our golf course superintendent, our director of agronomy and grounds here at Monarch Beach Golf Links. And what we wanted to talk today a little bit about was some of the projects that we have planned for Monarch Beach Golf Links, some of the things that we're planning on doing to improve the property, the quality of the product, and your overall experience. So appreciate you taking the time with us today. Matt, how are you today? I'm doing good, thanks Eric. Great, great. We're out here on hole six, and uh, what we want to talk about first is some of the turf issues that you all have witnessed and seen at Monarch Beach over the years. We've struggled with hole six and hole seven, especially the fairways. We've also struggled a lot with the first half of hole 12. And beginning on Monday, uh, April 18th, correct, Matt? Correct. We are going to um, engage with a contractor to rebuild from scratch uh, the fairways on six, seven, and the first half of 12. We think by doing that, we're gonna take our worst areas at Monarch Beach Golf Links, our worst fairways, and make them our best, which will then allow us to focus on other things of the golf course uh, for improvement. Um, what do you think about that, Matt? I think it's awesome. We're excited. Um, it's been a long time coming, and uh, we can't wait till April to come. Hey, Matt, why, um, how did it end up this way? Why do we continually see this happen every year here at Monarch? Uh, the main reason is we have poor water and poor soil. Um, the tight clay soils bind up um, the sodium and the nitrogen in the soil um, versus like a uh, sandy soil where it's able to leach down into the soil and get a little deeper away from the roots. Right, probably why you, when you go to Cabo, Hawaii, Palm Springs, Florida, the, the turf looks so vibrantly green. Yeah, because yep. they're growing on sandy soils. Right. Um, you know, this unfortunately is what we've inherited and talk a little bit about the process of what we're going to do to fix it. So how are we going to remedy this because so, it's going to take a lot of work. You know, part of the project is correcting the soil. So we're going to add um, an amendment into the soil, which the contractor is going to rototill into the soil. Um, there's a lot of faulty grades out on these fairways, so they're going to correct those grades and add a bunch of drainage, which will help move, you know, the, the reclaimed water and get it out of the soil. Yeah, just to, to break it down fairly simply, mid-March, we're going to spray the fairways with some Roundup type uh, chemicals to sort of uh, kill off and, um, you know, hibernate the Bermuda grass. Then what are the next steps that we'll, we'll see people will, will notice? So you'll see the contractor come in here, rototill it, um, add the amendment after that, rototill it again into the soil, blend it in real nice. Then they're going to put a nice grade out on the fairway. Um, the grade that you see out here is going to be a lot different. There's going to be some different slopes and undulations. Then after that, um, after they've completed the grading and all the low areas are going to come back and add drainage. Um, and what's the final step? The final step, they'll be resodding the fairway with new turf. So, I mean, that's pretty neat. If you think about it, we're going to um, fix the soil profile, fix the drainage. Um, we're going to replace all the turf with brand new, what type of turf are we going to replace? Santa Ana Bermuda. Santa Ana Bermuda, brand new turf. And then it'll open up back for play. And just, just to kind of recap what the timeline is, mid-March or so, we'll spray out the turf. We'll still play it as it is. About mid-April, we'll close this hole turn it into a par three. So we're gonna take six, make it a par three. We're gonna take seven, make it a par three. We're gonna to go to 12, make it a par four. The contractor is gonna do all their work for about four or five weeks. Then we're gonna go, we're gonna turn around and reopen the hole back to its original design and yardage and um, par. We're gonna make that car path only for maybe four or five weeks so that the turf mends in. And then we're gonna have the most ideal, perfect playing conditions you can imagine. And uh, what I'm super excited for too is, is Matt, you can, you can just relate that some of this turf that's on these holes is still really good. We're going to steal some of the turf on this hole in seven in the first part of 12, and we're going to go out and we're going to fix those little pots that we don't like on eight and nine and 10 and 18. And over on the back nine, we'll be able to jump over on 14 and 16. So we're going to utilize the good turf as well. And that's, I think that's pretty exciting. It is exciting, Eric. Can't wait. Cool. We have a couple other things to show you, uh, so stay tuned. 
If there's one thing that we have a lot of at Monarch Beach Golf Links other than perfect views and sunshine, it's these darn bunkers. That's for sure. We have over 90 bunkers, acres and acres of bunkers, and um, they're not always the easiest thing to take care of. So one of the things that we're going to do, we're super excited about while we do the turf project, is we're going to engage a company to put new sand in all of our bunkers and do some things to help it sort of blend in really well with what we currently have. But at the end of that exercise, what are we going to gain by doing that, man? Uh, we're going to gain uh, better color in the bunkers. are going to be more consistent. Uh, the playability is going to be better. And uh, That's it right there, that's right? That's it. They're going to look better. They're going to play better. And they're going to be more consistent. I think as our, you know, our valued guests and members and cardholders, you know, they tell us that you know, if there's a bunker that, that's a little nicer than others, you know, they'll let us know. And I think this will get them all to be sort of semi-consistent. Uh, they certainly will look better for the next couple of years. And, um, you know, the playability, which is, you know, it's super important. I mean, there's a lot of them. They're not easy to get out of, even if you watch our Monday Mulligan series or take lessons. So I think this will help everybody out. And then, you know, obviously the bunkers are a little older and we have some liner sometimes that's being, that's shown. Here's an example of what that liner looks like. The guys here will get a little closer and show you. But that liner is, you know, in some cases is over 30 years old in some of these bunkers. And until we do a really a good renovation, we're going to have to deal with the liner. But when we do this, when we bury the liner by adding in more sand, in some areas we'll cut out some liner or we'll repair it. But uh, one, we're going to make it better. Two, we want people to be patient with us. We notice this as well. We're going to um, be a little bit more on top of it. And by doing what we're doing with the bunkers, it'll allow us to focus more on that and less on the overall health of the bunker, correct? Correct. Cool. So that's, uh, that's two out of three. And then we'll go talk about the final thing we're going to do next. Yeah, hopefully by now you've all seen the new landscape uh, beds that we put in place. Uh, we've done this year, we were able to take advantage of some turf removal on holes 12 uh, up by the um, up by the 12th tee box, just kind of to the right side of the 11th fairway. Also over behind 17 green, kind of by the, the, uh, the 11th tee box, there's another area. And then where we just were over on hole six and seven uh, in between those, that green, the sixth green and the uh, seventh uh, tee box, there's some more of that turf removal. And, and as those landscape beds grow up, we're using uh, you know native flora and fauna. It's gonna look real pretty, just like you see behind the fifth green. So we're real excited that we were able to do that as well. Um, finally, uh, in regards to the turf project, we're out here on hole 13, dreaded 13. Anybody who's hitting this back greenside bunker knows this is one of the hardest bunker shots in North America, uh, tour golf professionals would have a hard time getting out of this bunker first and foremost, and then keeping it staying, keeping the ball on the green. So, Matt, tell us a little bit what we might expect, uh, what's going to happen here, what, what the contractor is going to do. Uh, so they're going to kind of blow this area up, remove this front lobe over here, lower this bunker, bunker, put a better pitch on it so that you're not sloping down into the green, um, get a little more loft on that ball coming out. And they're going to bring the bunker down and bring this uh, this back mound down a little bit. Yep. So what's cool is we're going to uh, get rid of the front part, kind of widen the fairway. We're going to move the bunker back a little bit closer to the back edge of the green. We're not going to lose the visibility of the bunker from the tee, but we're going to make it awfully uh, easier, more easy to hit out of so that we can get out of the bunker. And then once you get out of the bunker, you either hit it on the green surround that we're going to create in front of the bunker or it'll stay on the green. So we're very excited. And this is just another way for us to uh, kind of make the golf course more playable and more fun. And last but not least, I just want to remind everybody that uh, we understand uh, that the golf course has been abused and used a lot the last two years. COVID has been a godsend to the, to the facility of the game of golf, but not so much for the quality of the product and the pace of play. So along with some of these projects that we're doing to, to improve the quality of the golf course, uh, we're also going to pay way more attention this year on the volume of golfers that are coming out to Monarch Beach and the amount of time they're taking to play Monarch Beach Golf Links. And uh, we'll show you something in regards to that here as well. Thank you. Last but not least, I know that uh, we made some commitments to you this year. And 2022 is going to be the year of course improvement and faster pace of play. And this is just another thing that we're doing. We just created this A-frame that we're going to put by the first hole. And our starters and our marshals and our uh, reservation staff is all going to focus on this with our, with our customers, our patrons. It's very important that uh, people understand what the expectations are. We give them a little advice on how to adhere to those expectations, and we recommend the proper tees. 
Again, this is just another evidence of us trying to do our best to keep people to play or to get people to play a little bit faster and a little bit more proper with that course etiquette. Again, thank you so much. We reviewed what we're going to do on holes 6, 7, and 12. We talked a little bit about the bunker program that's going to happen around that same time. We're going to redo uh, that, that bunker on 13, which has been a nemesis to all of us. And we're going to focus on pace of play, and we're glad that you're going to be a part of it. You're going to be here to witness the change and the improvement, and uh, we just can't thank you enough for your patronage, your time, your effort, and your comments. So thank you very much. Have a great day.